in the first inning, I'll be like 96, 98, 96, 99. As I get deeper into games, it'll be like 94, 96, 94, 97, get up to like 100. So were you playing catch with Drangelo right when you got there? I am. Yeah, I was. Well, what was it like seeing him, you know, move the glove <laughs> to the other hand? <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting because. Out to center. This is great. It's way back. Welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. Today we have on the Mariners' second round draft pick, 55 overall, right-handed pitcher Ryan Sloan. Ryan was the 19th overall prospect heading into the MLB draft, so it's quite surprising that the Mariners were able to get him at pick number 55. As a senior in Illinois, he had 90 strikeouts over 46 innings and just five walks. He was named Illinois Gatorade Baseball Player of the Year, and he was a Wake Forest commit since his freshman year. The Mariners and Ryan's team agreed to a $3 million signing bonus, which is the equivalent value of the slot value of the 29th overall pick. At 18 years old, Ryan is currently 6'4", 230. He's sitting mid to upper 90s. He currently has a fastball, slider, and changeup combo. And he's going to be a very exciting project for the Mariners and their pitching development over the coming years. This podcast is sponsored by Black Label Supplements. They're my go-to for all things supplementation, whether it's pre-workout, post-workout, creatine, BCAAs, you name it. Go check out blacklabelsupplements.com. They are a third-party tested, athlete-approved supplement company. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off your order. And as always, if you're thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing a property in the Pacific Northwest, make sure to reach out to myself, the Couch GM. My full-time career is as a mortgage broker, assisting clients with their mortgage financing needs, because every sports fan needs to find a living room of their own to watch their favorite team on their big screen. You can visit brokerconnorweb.com or my contact information will be in the description of this video. And with that, let's get into the podcast. Thanks, Ryan, for joining me on the podcast. Really excited to hear more about yourself, your story, and uh, you know your time with the Mariners so far. So first off, thanks for joining me and looking forward to it. Sure, thanks for having me. Let's start with uh, you know your childhood, g- growing up, how you got into baseball and the sports. I want to get into how things are going right now, but let's start back with how you first got into baseball. Yeah, so both my parents played D1 sports. Um, they both played Austin P University, which is um, was in Tennessee. I don't know the exact time. I forgot it. But um, so my mom played basketball. She was a Hall of Famer there. And then my dad played um, baseball. So, and he was a catcher. He got drafted by the Dodgers out of high school. Didn't end up going because back in the day, there was like a hundred rounds. So he went in like the 40th something. So we're in that 40 range. So I ended up going to Austin P to play baseball there. But, um, you know, it was always just some sort of sport we'd be playing, you know, just having two parents that obviously like their whole life was sports. Obviously they want their kid to kind of indulge in that. So it would always be something, whether it was baseball, soccer, basketball, you name it, it would always be something. Now, do you have any siblings? I do. I have two younger sisters. It's funny. One of them, the middle one, she's, um, what is she now? It was actually their first day of school today. So they just went, she's a junior in high school now and total opposite of like everyone else in our family. She's very like, very good at music. She plays the piano, guitar, drums, like every instrument that you could think of. She sings too. She does school of rock. Um, so t- stuff up that alley. And then my little sister, my little, little one is, what is she? I think she's in sixth grade now, um, but she's more like me, plays softball, basketball, you know, gets after it. Yeah, I was curious if there was like any competition growing up with your siblings. <laughs> you know, she'll, the little, the one who's, uh, in sixth grade, she'll she'll get after it, you know. But sometimes you gotta put her in her place. She, you know, she wants to play wiffle ball. You know, doesn't fly. You know, it always ends, always ends up in her running inside. So <laughs> there you go, older brother. Yeah. Uh huh. So so growing up in Illinois, you know, uh, when you first started playing baseball and growing up, your dad was dra- drafted by the Dodgers. What what teams were you watching? What players were you watching? And looking to aspire to to, to play like. Yeah, so I've always grown up as a big Cubs fan. My dad will say that we're Chicago fans. I don't really buy that. Um, but, you know, it's always been the Cubbies, you know, that World Series team 2016. Um, ended up watching that. So it was really cool to see them win after however many years it was, like after Billy Go curse everything, you know. So it was super cool to see that happen. And then player-wise, you know, I wouldn't say there was like a ton that I would try to like model myself after. It was always kind of being myself, you know, taking what my dad taught me, you know, I was trying to 
takes other things from people that I would see on TV, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, growing up, getting into middle school, high school, walk me through your progression in baseball with growing into your body, with working out, with uh, gaining velo and, and how that looked. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how to put this, but I was always kind of like taller. Um, you know, my mom is six one, my dad's six foot. So kind of contribute that to that. But, um, you know, my first real like off season, I'd say was freshman year, freshman winter, maybe sophomore winter, one of those. So I ended up putting on a ton of weight to a point now I'm like 230. So I'll probably put on like 50, 60 pounds over that time period and add a couple inches. Um, you know, I committed to Wake Forest when I was a freshman. Um, I know you can't even do that anymore. Like schools can't talk to you unless you're a junior, which is kind of crazy to think making a college decision as a freshman. I didn't, didn't even play a single high school game, which is kind of funny to say. But um, through 87 and a bull, 88 and a bullpen once, and then all the phones came ringing. Um, and, you know, kind of just took it from there and things flew off. So you committed as a freshman. Okay. And what was that process yeah. like? Did you know that you wanted to commit to Wake Forest or did you figure <laughs> out from a few different schools? Yeah. You mean, honestly, I didn't, I wasn't really like aware of Wake Forest at the start. Um, you know, just, just cause it's like, I didn't even know they were really in ACC. You know, I wasn't a huge like college sports fan, you know, um, but ended up looking as like great baseball program. They had a pitching lab. They have a great um, academic like history. You know, I'm a pretty smart kid. So I wanted to go somewhere where I could get a really good education and that they obviously fit that while also getting much better as a baseball player. Um, but it kind of just came down to, I wanted to move somewhere down South, you know, where it'd be warm and I can play baseball outside the whole year and not have to be stuck up in like a dome or like a warehouse essentially. Mm -hmm. um, but when it came to schools, I was between, it was like, there's a lot of North, North Carolina schools. It's like a Duke, Wake Forest, North Carolina, um, Virginia, you know, a lot of schools like that in ACC. Yeah. And they have, you know, Wake Forest has had a couple guys, Rhett Louder, Chase Burns that have gone in the first round the past few years, some great pitching there. Um, so then, yeah, getting more into high school, what, what did your workout routine look like? I, I saw you in a video, you, you know, busting out some split squats and, and doing that. What was that routine like throughout the season and the off season that allow you, allowed you to pack on the 50, 60 pounds? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I think I have a really good support center around me. Um, at the place I work out, I work out at the boat. I'm in Bensonville. Um, when I first started working out there, it was pretty new. I think it was a year or two removed from actually being built. Um, and it's 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes away from my house. But the people they have there, my trainer, James Young, and my pitching guy now, Logan Schmidt, um, really collaborative process when coming up with what our goals were for the off season, I'd say. So what made it kind of unique about this year specifically was like, I was at a point where I really didn't need to put on weight so we could really focus in on, you know, getting faster, um, still getting stronger, obviously, but just focusing on other things. So a lot of guys going to off seasons thinking about like, Hey, I got to put on 20, 30 pounds to be able to go out and compete, you know, but being in a unique spot where I was, that wasn't something that kind of came to mind. But hmm. other than that, when it came to workouts, you know, I would, usually be on a six day a week thing. And then the seventh day would be kind of like relax, go do stuff on my own, you know, just kind of get out, like go play pickleball or golf, you know, something athletic, but, um, you know, just having them there, they set up a great program for me and all I had to do was go do it. Now, are you a big analytics guy and do you have access to like that technology in developing your, you know, fastball, the slider, the changeup combo that you have? Did you have those yeah. resources available? Yeah, so this last offseason, we got a track man at the facility. It was like a huge yeah. thing because we were kind of like battling for it almost, you know, because it's a pretty expensive buy. Like, you, if you're going to buy one, like, that thing is not cheap. That's so we ended up getting the facility, ended up getting one. And that was kind of a huge factor. And when it came to bullpens in January, you know, trying to figure out these things using the data we had and the resources we had at our facility to make me the best pitcher I can be. Yeah, so your junior year, you had 97 strikeouts over 53 innings. You had a no-hitter in your super sectional game. Walk me through that junior season and then heading into your your senior year. I mean, your senior year, 0 0.3 ERA, 90 strikeouts over 46 innings. Uh, Illinois Gatorade player, Baseball Player of the Year. Walk me through those, those last couple of years in high school. Yeah, so, I mean, that junior year, I felt like it was a really big year for me. 
um, kind of started out the year putting pressure on myself just to go out and show why I'm this number one ranked guy, why I should belong here, why I should be in the debate of being drafted. Um, a lot of stuff like that was going through the head, obviously, you know, but as I kind of went throughout the season and got into the playoffs, um, I just found it. Like, I'm like at a point, if a guy gets a hit, I don't really care. Like it's baseball, that things are going to happen. So I really just stopped putting pressure on myself to be successful when it came to like outcomes, you know, Mm -hmm. if it was a base hit, you know, I'm going to control what I can control, like throwing strikes, hitting my location, um, stuff like that. But then kind of going into this year, it was kind of the same thing all over again, just with better stuff. You know, I added a change up um, this year. I didn't have a change up last year. It's actually a funny story. Um, I ended up learning my change up at PDP. Um, didn't have one. Faced like eight lefties out of nine batters. And I was like, this fastball slider combo is not going to play. Like, these guys are freaking good. Like, I need to figure out how to throw a change up. Um, so I ended up learning one there. And that kind of just flourished into a great pitch for me now and able to use it in my this most recent high school season and had a pretty dominant year. Yeah. So that change up, is that like a, a circle change or is that a split finger? Um, how would you describe your arsenal that you currently have? Yeah. So the change up specifically, it's a pretty traditional, like two seam change up. Um, depending on the day, I'll move it back in the hand, move it up in the hand. Started playing with a kick change. A guy here throws a pretty good kick change. So I've been playing with that. It just gives me something to do and catch play. So it's pretty fun to do. Um, and then slider sliders. I've, Throwing a slider essentially my whole life. I used to be a little lower three quarter slot, so I'd always end up trying to throw a curveball, and the thing would not be a curveball; it'd be a slider. <laughs> so just went with it. Ended up being a pretty good pitch for me. And then obviously the fastball, um, throw pretty hard, so been a good little weapon for me. Yeah. Uh, what are you sitting at, and then what have you actually topped out at? Yeah. So usually in the first inning, I'll be like ninety six, ninety eight, ninety six, ninety nine, depending on the day usually around there. But then as I get deeper into games, be like 94, 96, 94, 97, get up to like a hundred. <laughs> okay. So you've hit a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. And then you pair it with the, the slider change up. That's tough. Now getting into, you know, the, the, your senior year, going to the MLB draft combine, getting into the draft itself. What was that experience in, in total for you? <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, it was super fun leading up to it because I felt at the beginning of the high school season, I wasn't, it was going to, I felt like it was going to be a harder decision leading up to the draft. Um, Just when it, before the high school season kind of played out, just for the fact that I was like kind of on the verge, like no one really knew what was going to happen. But then that high school season kind of solidified a lot of things, kind of put me up into a spot where I'd be getting paid a lot of money to go sign a professional contract um but then leading up to the draft there's just so much uncertainty like there's a huge kind of like range on where I could end up going so going into draft day it was like nobody had a clue I had no clue my agent didn't really have a clue like my family didn't have a clue on where this was going to go like you could go in the first 20 picks or you could go in the late second round. Like, so that's a huge range and just waiting for your name to be called on day one. I was like getting a little stressful. I'm like seeing all these names pass. I'm like, Oh boy. Like I, every single time they put up like the top prospects left, it'd be like me. And then some other kid who like dropped out of the draft. So it was funny <laughs> to see that. So you actually get the, that phone call, you know, what did that conversation and, the, and that phone call mean to you? Yeah. So it's actually funny. So I was talking to my agent. Um, he told me, he's like, hey, the Mariners are interested. It, you know, so I was like, okay, perfect. Like, we already had a pretty good relationship built up before the draft happened. Um, met with him at the Combine. Um, one of the guys came to my house. So an area scout and me were pretty close. Um, so leading up, we had a good relationship. So that obviously that was going to be a good spot for me to land. Um, but I never got my agent never got back to me if they were going to pick me. So we see the Mariners come up on the TVs inside and we're like still outside, like waiting for this call and they end up picking me and as I'm walking in, my name was being called. So it was really cool. Everyone was cheering. We had a nice little family and friends thing going on. So it really wasn't expected. It honestly wasn't. Um, no, I mean, it kind of came out of the blue because I just, 
it was like a couple picks before. Like we all, we always knew they were going to be kind of interested, but we didn't know if they could really meet the like money wise. Yeah. You know, obviously Seattle is a great place to go for pitching development, but when it came to money, we didn't know if it would ha- kind of work out just because the slot value was a little lower than we thought they could afford almost. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of an interesting thing to handle, but ended up figuring it out and now I'm doing all good. Yeah. So they took you 55th overall. And then, as you mentioned, you know, paid over slot value t- in order to be able to sign you. And then they had to do some adjusting in the later rounds to kind of make up for that. But um, that's awesome that they were able to grab you there. So after the the draft happens, walk me through the next, you know, few days, that next week, your trip to Seattle, meeting Durangelo and some of the other guys and, and what that experience was like. Yeah. So, I mean, a trip to Seattle was super cool because I've never, me and my family never been to Seattle. So being able to go see like a different part of the country, I thought was really cool. I thought it was, the city was way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a smaller city. No, it was freaking big. Um, but I ended up getting there. Super cool. Just to kind of like all the topography that would happen there. You know, you have the ocean, you also have the mountains, um, which I really find fascinating. Um, but Ended up going seeing all the sides, the fish market, the knee, the space needle. You know, I don't like heights. I'm really not a fan of heights, but ended up getting through it up there. Um, and that means Angelo is super cool. You know, I think we're very like minded when it came to how we go about our business. So it's pretty easy to get along with them. What was it like seeing T Mobile Park for the first time walking out on the field? I've always heard that's a really cool field. So being able to go out there and see it and look up, and look at all the stands, you know, I thought it was real special. It was real cool. Were you able to take in a game? Um, yeah, we went to a game. We did go okay. to a game. We went to cool. the then, game. Was it? We, they played yeah. the Angels when um, who was the one guy throwing? Soriano was throwing. Okay, I think he might have dealt against the Mariners. Yeah, he did. Thinking correctly. Yeah. And a big shout out to Deb's Coffee Bar. They are the sponsor of this podcast. This is their podcast studio. If you are located anywhere around Southwest Washington, make sure to check out one of their three locations. And if you're a big coffee guy like I am, make sure to check out orderdevs.com. Use code COUCHGM for free shipping off your order. So you leave Seattle for the first time. You, do you head straight to Arizona? I went straight to Arizona. We, me and Jerangel hopped on a flight from Seattle to Arizona. Hopped in an Uber, went straight to the complex, and got situated there. So, like day one, what, what what type of stuff are they teaching you guys or putting in front of you? Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of meetings just because me and Gerangelo got there later than the other guys. I think the other guys got there a couple days before us, so we had some meetings that we missed. We had to go back over those, but um, mm-hmm. literally when we got there from the Uber, we went in through right away outside at okay. the peak of the hottest time of the day. It was like 3 p.m. And it's like 110 outside. The sun is just beaming on you. It was so hot outside. You know, just kind of a welcome to Arizona moment right there. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of been similar to what I've done at home. You know, it's workout. You know, it's throw. It's do mobility. You know, have some meetings, eat lunch, eat breakfast, call it a day. So were you playing catch with Drangelo right when you got there? I am. Yeah, I was. Well, what was it like seeing him, you know, move the ball <laughs> to the other hand? <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting because you got kind of, it's like a marathon. You got to kind of pace yourself. You know, I'm only a one arm thrower. You know, I'm not as unique as him, but, you know, I have to pace myself because this guy has to throw with two arms while I only have to throw with one. So I can't go and gas out. And then he still has to throw with a completely another arm still, you know? So it's an interesting dynamic we got going on. I think I've got started to get the hang of it a little bit as we've thrown more together. Yeah, that's wild. That that would be pretty trippy seeing seeing you know him switch over and he, have you seen his stuff from both sides? Like, is he throwing the breaking balls? Is it the same arm slot from both sides? <laughs> Do the pitches look the same? Yeah, that's the funny part. Like, I actually have to pay attention when I'm playing catch with him because if he calls a curveball, I actually have to make sure he's throwing it from a left curveball or a righty curveball, so I don't get like a broken finger when I'm catching it. But um. You know, it's pretty similar. You know, the left side is more of a two seam. Um, I don't think it's his, his as powerful side. I think he throws a lot harder from the right. Um, mm-hmm. So that's more of like he's got a good sinker. He's got a good changeup. He's got a good changeup from both sides. You know, the fastball shape from the right is like I've never seen it before. It's a low release height. Thing just takes off on you. So you're. it's very easy to get blown up by it. Um but it's just super cool to see him switch from both sides. Like 
will be getting gunned on just like a little flat ground. And this guy has to do both arms. So I got to catch eight fastballs instead of four, you know, like he would to me. So, yeah. Yeah, that's wild. What, what, uh, have they laid out kind of like a plan for you the rest of this season, what that looks like, if you're going to be getting into some game situations? Honestly, I don't even know what I'm leaving yet. So, okay. um, I'm kind of just playing it by ear. You know, I always like to kind of just be in the moment. Um, you know, obviously I think it'd be cool to figure out what the plan is for the next couple of weeks, but I'm, I'm throwing a bullpen Friday, so that'll be good. Um, but other than that, it's just been, you know, they send us our schedule the night before and then you head up to the complex and get it done. Yeah. So who would you comp your pitching style to if there is a big leaguer there that or you know, in a league that you could talk to? I have no clue. I I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I have okay. no clue. I think yeah. there's a lot of bits and parts from a lot of different players, you know. Do you have any certain pitches that you're looking to add to your arsenal while you're either down there or, you know, in the coming weeks or months? Yeah. So right now I got the fastball slider change up, but then it's really, I just play with a ton of stuff when I play catch just because it gives me something to do. I'm always trying to get better in some facet of the game. Um, but the two seam has been really good lately. Cutter has been really solid. So it's really f- figuring those out, getting them consistent, being able to have some confidence in them to throw them and then, see how they grade out on the track, man, when I go throw them in a pen. Yeah. Essentially, the Mariners' current rotation in the big leagues right now is all drafted and developed, you know, over the past five, six years. What have you seen so far from their pitching development and what they're just kind of telling you of your style and how to attack hitters that's that's different from, from what you've heard in the past? Yeah, I mean, so we've had a lot of meetings when it comes to, like, pitching ideology. I'd say, um, you know, their whole thing, dominate the zone. We've heard it like a thousand times, um, you know, just kind of the statistics behind it. Um, I thought were very intriguing on the odds of swinging and the odds of the guy getting a hit when you throw a first pitch fastball and winning the one, one, the OO counts, I thought was really cool. And then just giving us, all these stats that say it's in your favor. If you do that, you know, it just really gives you the confidence to actually go out there and throw those one, one fastballs for strikes. Oh, oh, fastball for strikes. Um, but other than that, you know, it's been a real like collaborative process. I'd say a lot of it is like, you know, I have a pretty solid routine in place, so it's not them coming in and making me fit into a cookie cutter mold that, you know, some teams have, you know, so that's really cool to see just the fact that they're there for if I need support, but you know, if I'm good, I got a solid thing going, you know, it's all, all steam ahead. Letting you be your, your own pitcher. That's good. Precise. Exactly. What, what do you do to get away from baseball when you're looking to just relax and not think about baseball? Um, is there anything that you, that's your go-to to relax? I just bought a puzzle. I've just been doing puzzles all day. Puzzle. Um, really? A puzzle. I just bought a, what is that? Uh, it's a London. It's a city, the city of London puzzle. <laughs> thousand pieces, pieces I've been doing that? it lately. Um, other than that, golf. golf. I've been golfing a good amount just because we have a lot of free time here. And golf's pretty cheap when it's 3 p.m. So it's a pretty good deal for it. <laughs> so you go out in the heat of the day? I do. Man. Like, it's like if you have the mindset that you already know it's going to be hot and you're going to sweat a little bit, it's honestly not too bad. You know, you're in a car, you get a nice little breeze coming through, you know, so we get it figured out. There you go. How would you describe your golf game? Inconsistent. There you go. I think it's been getting better just for me playing every day. Um, Back at home, golf is just so cheap or sorry, dead opposite, just so expensive. So like I wouldn't get out very much. Um, Mm -hmm. But here it's like 30, 40 bucks around with a cart, you know, so that'll definitely do. So we've been getting out a decent amount. I guess uh, another question that I had was, when did you move to becoming a, a pitcher only when you were growing up? And, you know, do you swing it from from the right side? Yeah, I do. You know, I was uh, – when I, I hit my freshman year um, on JV, I was like 0 for 20. I was awful. <laughs> like, I would pop out. It would be like just to- towering pop-ups to, like, the infield. Um, but then my sophomore year, that was when I really called it quits um just became a po lived a po life go golf go work out that's all i did my whole week 
Yeah, I mean, baseball is a game of failure, but it's mainly a game of failure for batters. So now you're on the <laughs> the better side, you could say. Yeah, right. I just wanted to, I just wanted to succeed more. You know, there you go. That's the whole reason. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. What what are you most looking forward to the the rest of your your season this year and over the the coming year? Um, I just think I think I'm really looking forward to like the new resources and like people I have around me that are very educated and very good at what they do. So being able to lean on them when I have questions or when I need things answered, I think is really cool. You know, not just having the people I have at home, but also having the analytical stuff that they have as well. Um, And the pitching analytics specific, like people who that's their job is to go over that and just having them as a resource there, um, I think could really elevate my game. Yeah. So I had a grant nip on last week and he mentioned Mm -hmm. that he, uh, went against Jacob deGrom on forget what it's called, where the, it's the (laughs) pitching machine. Uh Yeah. The pitching machine that shows every pitcher. Have you gone in just to stand in the box against any guys yet? I haven't, I haven't even gone. I don't think I'm allowed in that little hitting area. I think it's like, if I think if I walked in there, I'd get kicked out right away. 100%. Yeah. No risk in getting hit by a hit by a ball. <laughs> well, uh, Ryan, really appreciate your time. Really excited to see you progress over the coming months and year and looking forward to our next interview. I'm like, I'm sure I'll get you on the field at some point when you're with the Aqua Sox. again, thank you for your time. And, uh, yeah, best of luck for sure. Thank you, man. Out to center. This is great. It's way back. It is gone. 